welcome all all the students from third year mechanical engineering so in the chapter material science and metallurgy up till now two chapters we have finished answer that in first chapter you have studied the part of the powder metallurgy the manufacturing process and the detailed study of the powder metallurgy various products and the applications of the powder metallurgy advantages limitations all these things we have studied in second chapter you have studied the destructive as well as non destructive testing methodology and uh, by the way of this testing methodologies how we can uh, identify the qualities of the material how we can test the uh, proper properties of the material that part we have studied now coming to the next chapter we are going to study now introduction to ferrous alloys so introduction to ferrous alloys inside this various points in that chapter are present the brief classification of metals concept of alloying classification of cooling curves types of equilibrium diagram construction of equilibrium diagram and lever rule solid solution and types iron iron carbide equilibrium diagram plain carbon steels composition applications and properties effect of alloying elements on steels alloy steel such as tool steels stainless steel with composition properties and applications types of cast irons composition properties applications specifications and standard used for steels so like this in exhaustive manner we will have to study this chapter introduction to ferrous alloys and with this first point first bit of this chapter brief classification of metals so in this video lecture we are taking small review on the brief classification of metals professor dr ej kulkarni from singhagad institute so coming to the introductory part of this brief classification of metals so metals broadly are classified into two groups out of which one group is ferrous and another broad group is non ferrous metals the ferrous metals are being ones that contains iron so if iron is present we are considering that metals as ferrous metals the iron is the basis of such a classification if iron is not present then that is non ferrous type of metals so iron is very cheap and it is easy to refine so okay, again material if as a metal if we consider the iron it is cheap metal as compared to all the metals it is very cheap metal and it is easy to refine so that's why we can reuse the iron basically content of the iron is large in our cast we it is easily available it is cheap and we can reuse it by using the refinery process iron is tremendously versatile due to its many different phases and properties now one by one which are the various phases what are the different properties that part we are going to study in this chapter but as introductory part we should understand that iron is tremendously versatile due to its many different phases and properties it can have by itself or when combined with carbon or other alloying elements so when pure iron is used the properties will be different when it is combined used with carbon and other alloying metals then its properties are different when carbon is added then also the way of classification is different when other alloying elements are used then also way of classification is different 
but this particular ion due to addition of these carbons and these alloying elements have different properties as well as different phases. So coming to the ferrous alloys, if we try to classify the ferrous alloys in broad manner, as already stated, the metals contained iron as a primary constituent can be subdivided into two general groups including steel and cast iron means in ferrous alloys so the metal contains iron so that's why we are considering as ferrous that is primary constituent is iron and based on the uh, this particular iron content as a primary constituent, these are subdivided into two general groups which includes steels and cast ions. So, the primary classification of ferrous alloys are based on the carbon content. We are taking basis here as a content carbon. So, low carbon steels. So that low carbon steel which contains less than 0 0.25 weight percent of carbon. The particular percentage of the carbon is less that's why hypoeutectoid this word we are using hypoeutectoid. What is hypoeutectoid? Hypoeutectide means the carbon content is if it is less than 0.8 percent then that is considered to be hypoeutectide. So low carbon steel in which 0.25 percent carbon is present. In medium carbon steels it contains 0.25 up to 0.6 percent carbon means in medium carbon steel that range of carbon content is 0.25 percent to 0.6 percent so that's why it is considered to be medium carbon steel again it is hypoeutectoid because percentage of the carbon is less than 0.8 percent and in high carbon steel which contains the carbon from 0.6 percent up to 1.4 percent as it is 0.6 percent to 0.8 this phase will be hypoeutectoid then 0.8 eutectoid and more than 0.8 also that's why hyperutectoid so likewise in high carbon steel the range of carbon content is 0.6 percent to 1.4 percent so that's why it has hypoeutectoid, eutectoid and hyperutectoid phases. As more carbon is added to the steel the alloy enters the cast iron regime where carbon is between 3 percent and 4.5 percent by weight. So low carbon steels less than 0.25 percent medium carbon steel seen between 0.25 percent to 0.6 percent high carbon steel 0.6 percent to 1.4 percent and then as more carbon is added to steel the alloy enters in the cast iron region so cast iron in which the carbon content is 3 percent to 4.5 percent by weight so if we look to this classification of the ferrous metals steel and cast iron likewise two broad classification areas are present in steel low carbon steel medium carbon steel high carbon steel and alloy steel and in cast iron gray cast iron white cast iron malleable cast iron high duty cast iron and hollow cast iron so uh, these are the basis of classification in case of ferrous metals and steels and cast iron. If we take example of steel and cast iron, these are the 
various types of steels and various types of cast iron. Then coming to in previous slides here we have seen the uh, steels. Now here coming to the cast iron. So grey cast iron is formed upon slow cooling of silicon rich cast iron. Here. Already in classification we have seen that the grey cast iron. So grey cast iron means it is formed upon slow cooling of silicon rich cast iron and it is characterized by the occurrence of graphite flakes. So here we should ensure that cooling is slow. In silicon rich cast iron Grey cast iron is silicon rich cast iron and in this graphite flakes are present. So characteristics of the grey cast iron what we can say it is obtained by slow cooling. It contains silicon rich region and graphite flakes are occurred in the grey cast iron. So in the structure which add the stress concentrate concentrators, so graphite flakes which add the stress concentrators, this produce favorable vibration damping. So vibration damping are provided due to this graphite flakes which are present inside this grey cast iron as well as it gives wear resistance. But at the expensive of strength and ductility. That means in grey cast iron we will observe the vibration damping as well as wear resistance. But strength and ductility is not observed in grey cast iron. So at expense of strength and ductility we will get the two properties in service vibration damping and wear resistance. While the tensile stress is also weak. So grey cast iron possess fair compressive strength. So this is about grey cast iron. So how this grey cast iron of, uh, we, we are getting by slow cooling and silicon rich cast iron occurrence of graphite flakes. This is the characteristics of grey cast iron. And coming to the properties, vibrational damping and wear resistance we are getting, but strength and ductility that is less and compressive strength is also less. The ductile cast iron that is made when magnesium or cerium is added to spherodite, a product of annealing perlitic iron ductile iron as its name implies it's soft and ductile because of these additions. So coming to ductile cast iron it is made in order to obtain the ductile cast iron we will have to add magnesium or cerium. Okay, so which alloys in cast iron are required? Magnesium and cerium is required to add in the ductile cast iron. So here a product is obtained means in order to get the ductile cast iron additional to magnesium and cerium addition we will have to go for the annealing process. Annealing is one kind of heat treatment process and this is perlitic iron. So annealing process always makes the cast iron as a ductile cast iron. So this is one kind of heat treatment process. So ductile iron as it is name implies it is soft and ductile. You look here. So remaining part of from white cast iron will continue from the next lecture. So thank you all of you for your attention up to this grey cast iron and ductile cast iron.